No, the title is not clickbait. I really did shock myself on a 3D printer. It could have been a lot worse than it was. And this video is really important because it was partly my fault. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and this video is really important for me to put out a warning to anyone working with 3D printers, kit or otherwise, to take extreme care because these machines are capable of carrying high voltages. And I need to tell a story of how I did touch one with quite a high voltage and it was safe enough for me to be fine, but it could have been a lot worse than it was. So let me set the scene for you. I had just gotten back to Sydney after a red eye flight overnight from Perth and I needed to drive one and a half hours back to our new place to get up and running again. I, I was feeling behind and feeling like I wanted to get back into things. So the place is a tip, everything's in boxes, I don't know where stuff is, and there's two machines I need to get up and running and test. So there's the JG Aurora A5, which I just made the review on, and the Prusa i3 Mark III. So the issue is in the garage, which you would have seen in my live streams, there's no power where the, the workbench is, there's power on the other side. So I didn't know where my good power boards and good extension leads were, so something I should have never have done, something you should never do, is I started daisy chaining just whatever I could find to get it to that side of the room. I started the JG Aurora A5 and started a two-day print, which is the Triceratops skull, and then I let it go, and then I plugged in the Prusa Mark III and set that up on the table. And I, I grabbed it with my thumb at the front on the screws and felt a very strong electrical sensation. Um, it, it shocked me, it wasn't like uh, full maze potential, but it was really, really uncomfortable. Um, and just, to be honest, I was tired. I just got really angry. <laughs> I was like, I just dealt with the Flying Bear tornado fiasco with you know, a crappy machine with very poor quality parts. So I was like, this is, this is the Prusa Mark III and I just got a shock from it. What the heck is going on? Um, and it just so happens that Joseph was getting in touch with me too because he had issues of his own where the machines that had been sent to me and Tom and, uh, and Joel were very early production models. They were actually before the, before the instruction manuals were even written. And he was asking if there was anything wrong with them and like if I'd gotten the right bed surface plates. And I was like, uh, Joseph, your printer just shocked me. It's carrying, it's carrying uh, voltage. And he naturally freaked out and um, we couldn't quite figure out what it was. So I took a measurement from that pin um, and it was reading to, to my body actually, which is really, again, stupid. I knew I, I touched it and it was uncomfortable. So then I proceeded to use a multimeter and use that to measure the volt. Just again, never work when you're tired. Um, and it measured over hundred volts, which is, you know, depending on the, on the current, pretty high. I mean, high enough to be pretty bad. So I didn't want to touch this machine and it measured um, up to like 60 volts on some, some uh, metal on the wall. I didn't have reach to get to a, a sink to measure like um, the grounding to like a, a water pipe. So Joseph was, was obviously concerned and I was pissed off. So I pulled up some measurements, my multimeter and looked at the grounding pin. And I went from the ground pin to the front of the machine, the Mark III, and it read a fairly, uh, fairly reasonable, like 20 or so um, kilo ohms, which is probably why it was a slight tingle and a very, very low, like three and a half ohms between the back and the grounding, which makes sense because there's all the metal plates, there's resistance that you get, get further away from that power supply. The thing is, that's how ground is meant to work. Ground is meant to be connected to, to the, the frame. Uh, which was my first hint, but again, I was too tired to realize what was going on. So the next day I said to Joseph, do you want me to move it to another room where there's a, a like a, a tap, like a water tap, metal, metal pipe into the ground, and I can measure between the point and that to see what voltage I get? He's like, yeah, that'd be great for my engineers. So I moved it to a different room, plugged it into a power point that was different, and did the measurement, and it measured like six volts or something. Like well, well below what I'd measured before. And, uh, that was like, okay, what the heck is going on? And uh, in the meantime, the JG Aurora was A5 was still printing the Triceratops skull, still going. And it slowly started to make sense. 
And anyone who's an electrician would probably have guessed what's, what happened, but let me show you a demo. So, this is an example of the uh, power strip I was using to, to plug the printers in. And you notice it's got the three pins, we're in Australia. The bottom one is ground or earth. And uh, that's critical for any, any uh, machinery that goes into mains that has a metal casing and has the potential to get the mains potential if a wire was too short to it. And the whole point of ground is if you do get that, that stray wire and short, it will trip your circuit breaker and nullify the risk. So that's why, you know, if a toaster goes zap and bang and your circuit breaker goes, don't ever plug that toaster in again. And this is an example of an IEC cable that a lot of these printers use. Again, this is grounded. But what about something like this? This is a non-grounded plug. And this is something you often see in like phone chargers and stuff like that because there's an isolation aspect to it, isolation transformer, in which that there's no chance that this mains uh, incoming voltage can short to the frame or to any devices on the other end because it's isolated. In theory, anyway. So what was happening? Well, somewhere along the chain, there was a very, very, very old piece of crap adapter which did not have ground. The ground was not working on it. So what that meant is these machines were plugged and sent to the same strip with a shared ground that could not go to ground and that was going back into the Prusa Mark III and electrifying the frame. So yes, the JG Aurora A5 was leaking voltage into ground and I need to do more experiments into it to see what's going on because when it's used on a grounded plug, you wouldn't know. But because of this strange quirk and stuff up on my behalf, it, it was actually quite bad and it could have been a lot worse than it was and I'm very lucky that there was still quite high resistance or it's not a very big leakage. I felt it, but it was not full mains potential. So before I proceed any further, I owe Joseph Prusa a massive apology because I probably made him lose sleep. I did not go on Twitter and rant about it because I wasn't sure of myself. It's such an unusual thing. I've never come across it before, but I owe him a humongous apology. So I'm sorry, Joe. And uh, as a, in return, I'm gonna put on your t-shirt. Okay, there you go, guys. So what does this mean for you? Well, it puts into perspective a lot of ignorance around mains voltages and 3D printers. For example, this is a photo of a cable that came with a 3D printer kit I got sent from China. This is a cable that got sent to me with a 3D printer kit end stripped, ready to basically electrocute someone because there was no grounding available in that plug on a power supply which had ground available. You absolutely have to have ground when you work with these things because if something goes wrong, you need the ground to sink away voltage to avoid electrocution risks. Because I'm not sure many people realize a metal frame 3D printer has the potential to completely become live should any of those wires touch any part of the metal frame. It will conduct through the entire thing. Mains voltage can kill people if it doesn't have the proper precautions. And further, there's also the temptation, which is something I've actually fallen into the past without really considering it, to use adapters and things like cheetah plugs to use different types of plugs with the, the ones you have in your country. And some of these do not preserve earth. Some of them don't have grounding. So you're actually converting a three, a safe three prong into an unearthed two prong, which is extremely dangerous. And if something like this happens, this is the first time it's ever happened to me, but again, it's really put into perspective how dangerous this is. So please guys, learn from my mistakes. This was partly my fault, but also partly the fault of the JG Aurora A5 because no freaking machine should be chucking voltage down the, the ground line. And I love this community. I aim to empower your creativity through 3D printing. I would hate to see anyone get hurt. Um, by all means, flame me in the comments of this video. Tell me what you think might be happening in the JG Aurora A5. I would love to know. Let me know what I should test. I'm not, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm only an enthusiast for 3D printing, but I do have the right tools to do checks. And please share this video guys with anyone who may be kind of taking uh, mains voltages a little bit ignorantly and just let them know that yeah, uh, even supposed experts can 
can still make mistakes. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful and thank you so much for watching. And I'm not even gonna do the subscribe thing because yeah. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.